three quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10 plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. I mean, they're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. We talked about the Otani story, this, uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> Now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You do, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Decisions. We are making it happen for you on a Tuesday night. I am Kevin Walsh. We are live on Sports Grid for the next two hours as we have plenty to break down last night's NBA reaction, a ton of shifting odds, and three more games tonight. NHL playoffs, a full baseball board, and of course, the countdown to the NFL draft continues Thursday. We are live in studio after tonight. The next time you'll see OK Dubs. Will be 7.30 sharp right here for a huge NFL draft round number one. Bears on the clock. Caleb Williams already assumed to be that pick. Changing odds for two, three. Quarterback also find themselves drafted four. Or is it five? Is it six? We're going to go through all of that. We'll continue those conversations in the lead up to the NFL draft. But we start... Uh, with the Open, which will involve your NBA bracket. And, <sighs> all right, last night's NBA games. Uh, everyone's talking about Cavs Magic, obviously the result. Uh, uh, all right, Cavs Magic. Quickly on this, the Orlando stuffs look pitiful. Incredibly, of the three teams that are down 2-0, they probably feel the best because they haven't had their hearts ripped out like the Sixers and the Lakers have, despite the fact that the Magic look atrocious right now in this series. How much of that is postseason inexperience? How much of that is the Cleveland Cavaliers? A bigger question when we try and talk about the Cavs moving forward, not to assume that this is already done and over and finalized and this is going to be a route here for Cleveland. Orlando grabs a game at home and then all of a sudden this opens back up series-wise. But, uh, of course, we... Uh, we'll break that down, game three. When we get there, people will continue to tick under on that total. As far as the other two results, uh, look, I'll say this. The officiating was embarrassing from the NBA. The two-minute report confirming that not only Tyrese Maxey was fouled, but they should have given Nick Nurse a timeout is a disgrace. It is not outrageous to say that if either of those calls are made correctly by the officials, this is 1-1 Philly. But simultaneously, if you're the Sixers, you still should have not been put in that spot. You should have called a timeout on the baseline or inbounded the ball correctly or grabbed an offensive or grabbed a defensive rebound. And for the Sixers, it's gut wrenching. But for the Sixers, you're going back home and you're going to feel like you can win those games in Philly. So it's not all hope lost. The Lakers is a different scenario because you've now lost 10 consecutive games the Denver Nuggets. And it's always heart-wrenching. It's always a gut punch. It feels like you just can't cross the finish line despite a 20-point lead in the third quarter and a double-digit lead 
in the fourth. And when you start to point fingers, there's plenty of blame to go around. Look, I'll say this. LeBron got baited into shooting a three-point shot early in the shot clock because KCP fell to the floor. I mean, I know he was wide open, and yeah, it would have been great if he knocked it down, but LeBron could have easily got to the cup and put two on the board, and instead he took a three. That's about the only blame that gets put on the Lakers' best option to guard Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic, which is pathetic and a look towards the top of that organization. Darvin Ham is useless and will be fired at the end of this season. And Anthony Davis is going on record complaining that he doesn't understand how the Defensive Player of the Year award works while he's getting absolutely cooked to smithereens by Nikola Jokic in the biggest moments of this game. And I get it. I get it. I do. Jokic is close to impossible to stop. But can I get something on the other end? No fourth quarter points from Anthony Davis. And of course, it's not a surprise. They allowed Jamal Murray to heat up and score 14 in the fourth. And I know they lost at the buzzer. It should have never been there. And it should have never been there. But I will say, probably the most insane piece of replay officiating I've ever seen in my life. They called a foul. They watched the replay. D'Lo gets hit in the face and they overturn it. It's usually difficult to overturn things. They clearly show the foul. I have no idea what's going on there. For the Lakers, you go back home, and here's why it doesn't feel better. Because if the Lakers are up 15 in the third quarter in their own building, there will be no confidence. The Lakers will not feel comfortable until the game is over and they have more points than Denver. And even then, they won't feel great because they're going to have to do it four more times. It's a nightmare. That's enough of that. We'll recap those series in a little bit and where some of the odds stands. But, of course, we have three games tonight for the people that we're going to get in the mix with here. Phoenix, Minnesota, Dallas, L.A., Pacers, Milwaukee, pretty appropriate to have all three games here because what do you have? You have three road teams that were favored to win their series before the game one loss. Everything's flipped, and all the teams are dogs now. Overreaction, I think so. There looks like there's some value on Phoenix. I have a Milwaukee series price. The Pacers and their offense, of course, will be live. This is the question mark of the night. Did the line flip because there's Clippers love? Or did the line flip because Kawhi might come back? Incredibly and embarrassingly, we do not know still if Kawhi will play. Because this is how Kawhi and the Clippers operate. And the Clippers not by choice, but because Kawhi just does whatever he wants and the Clippers can seemingly get no answers out of him. Let's go over to the NHL quickly here. Last night, Connor McDavid, easy as you like, five assists. What an absolute superstar. The two plus points, never in doubt. Wish you climb the ladder. The Oilers are going to be on a mission this postseason, and I look forward to watching it play out. We've got four on the ice tonight. We'll, of course, talk to Joe Madden in a little bit and get her thoughts on it. Colorado looks to grab one off of Winnipeg. We've got Vancouver and Nashville late night here. Rags up one, and the Panthers take care of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And could Nikita Kucherov be inspired by the Connor McDavid show that was last night? We will, of course, be abs on all of this. Major League Baseball, four key games, but let me just quickly, we'll go back to these. Let's shoot inside here. We've got Red Sox Guardians going off the board in just a minute. People in the back, you got to trust them. They're liking the nerfy here between the Guardians and the Red Sox. So if you want to get in the mix, you get no runs in the first inning. By the time I'm back in that chair, that bet might be a winner or a loser, but hopefully not a loser. We'll take a winner on the board. Let's pull back out. It is Dinger Tuesday, of course. We're going to look to get in the mix here. I was tempted on a principal play. We had a respect play last week where no respect was shown. Acuna Jr. doesn't homer, then homers the next day. Freddie Freeman against Patrick Corbin is literally what I took last week. Do I go back to the well? Absolutely not. We're not going to force that here. Uh, we've got Gaussman against the Royals, Logan Gilbert against the Rangers. How about those Baltimore Orioles red hot back in first place in the AL East? Baltimore's really good. Baltimore is really good. Now, we're not going to start getting puffy chested about World Series picks in April, but it is nice to see that team back up their pricing in the market. And what I mean by that is this team is very routinely booked as favorites. If the Orioles can make do, and again, win themselves 95, 100 games, more importantly, win the American League East, Baltimore being the AL favorites by the time we get to October is not off the board. As I said, the NFL draft, it is, of course, Thursday. Close. But there's still plenty of uncertainty as to 
how everything is going to play out on draft night. But with the Minnesota Vikings, the odds say it's a lock. They're taking quarterback. I mean, I guess minus 250 isn't a lock, but that's a lot of trust. They pick 11. Nobody thinks they're taking a quarterback at 11. This is going to require a trade. But is it a trade up to three with the Patriots? Trade up to four with the Cardinals? Is it a trade up to five with the Chargers? If that trade is executed, one thing it should lock in is J.J. McCarthy under five and a half draft position. That is at least the expectation. And if that is true, it's a cheaper number than minus 250. And by the way, that doesn't mean Minnesota has to draft J.J. McCarthy. But if Minnesota comes up, it can kind of force the issue for some other football teams. So we'll break that down. Quick pick, and we'll expand on this in a bit. But give me Ant Edwards to lead the series against the Phoenix Suns in total made threes at plus 220. We'll explain more in a bit. But up next, we'll talk to Tom Vecchio. It is Dinger Tuesday, so let's get in the mix. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will take a long series from the Oilers and the Kings. And ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second-best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king-size bed, a, 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 a possipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He's ready to roll. Denominate tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, we're in the mix. Tom Vecchio joins Game Time Decisions now. Uh, We've got NBA, we've got Major League Baseball, we've got postseason hockey. Tom, uh, I imagine your favorite time of year. Yeah, thanks for having me. Certainly one of the best times of the year. It's either now or in October once we have, you know, the World Series, MLB playoffs going on. We'd be, you know, full swing of NFL at that time. But this is certainly an awesome time to be a sports fan. This action, you know, every single day, high intensity when it comes to NBA and NHL. I'm ready to roll. Uh, So let's start off uh, for the people with Dinger Tuesday, Tom, uh, because we've got big plus prices if we're going to get involved here. Uh, I'm not going to make you give uh, the people the breakdown for the third straight week or the fourth straight week on what you look for, but who are you betting tonight for Dinger Tuesday? Uh, Let's go to Michael Bush for the Chicago Cubs. First of all, there are about 10 to 15 mile power winds blowing out in Wrigley Field. Uh, Wrigley is a stadium that is impacted by wind more than any other stadium. Like one mile power wind at Wrigley is like 1.2 of a boost instead of a 1% boost. It's like, it's just that much more at Wrigley. So Michael Bush, 
Great match for him. He's off to an amazing hot start this year. Comes in with a 204 WRC plus a 478 Woba, a 362 ISO, and a 46% fly ball rate, along with a 50% hard contact rate versus righties. Great matchup for him going up against JP France, pitch we're not worried about when it comes to Houston. You know, only a 39% fly ball rate and only 0.82 home runs per nine. Uh, obviously, smaller sample size when it comes to the pitcher. Not really worried about that overall. Michael Bush is off to an immensely hot start. Also looking to uh, Ryan Hearn. Yeah. Oh, just li- I like the Michael Bush pick there. He's been on fire. Uh, the Cubs helped me out on, I think, two weeks ago when Cody Bellinger sent one deep. And I think Wrigley's a spot that if that wind is, you know, if it's going out, a lot of people will identify for their Dinger Tuesdays. Yeah, absolutely. We want to go from there and then to Ryan O'Hearn for Baltimore. You know, you talked about Baltimore in the open. They just have an elite lineup. And I, I love taking hitters, maybe not at the top of the lineup, but he's been hitting in the middle lineup, always surrounded by, you know, good batters. Players will be on base before him. Griffin Canning, not a pitcher I'm worried about in any capacity. Uh, we look to Ryan O'Hearn, a 169 WRC plus a 302 ISO and a 44.7% fly ball rate and a 38% hard contact rate in the split. Again, if you don't like the home run prop, you want to go with an RBI prop or a total base prop, also in play for both of those hitters. All right, so we've got some Dinger Tuesday on the board here. Uh, let's go NBA playoffs, Tom. Uh, three games tonight. You have a favorite pick for the association? Yeah, I would certainly go with the Suns uh, tonight. I, I like them, but, man, they got to get things going when it comes to the rebounds. Game one, 52-28, to 28, they were out rebounded by Minnesota. you think that was a box score when like Minnesota was playing Charlotte or something, just an absolute embarrassment on the boards. Everyone has to do more. Everyone has to do more or this series is going to be over in five or six games in favor of Minnesota. So let's go to Devin Booker over three and a half rebounds. Let's think of minus 144. Again, we have to think about like what's logical for the Suns. It's not going to be Booker pouring in 40 points. They have the scores. Everyone has to do more when it comes to rebounding the ball. We know what the defense and size that Minnesota could bring. So Durant goes for six or seven rebounds. Yusuf Nurkic has to do more, uh, but Booker, also a player I like coming in from the wing, grabbing those rebounds as well. Yeah, look, some of those rebound props can be depressed because they're always low for the guards, right? right. Low numbers, postseason, we see those minutes uptick, and you try and take advantage of them. Uh, I'm curious, Tom, for you, um, is there anything that you noticed from the two ga- or three games yesterday, two games deep now, that just kind of stood out from a result or something that you were betting that people need to keep an eye on for that series moving forward? Yeah, I think the Magic are cooked. Like, I have the Cavs minus one and a half, and I'm just – I'm still shocked that we, we're not seeing Wendell Carter or uh, Mo Wagner in the starting lineup. Like, they are getting pushed around on the reba- on rebounds. Wait, Jared Allen's coming with 15, 18 rebounds every single game. Why do they not have a <laughs> traditional center out there putting up some size against them? Like when you have Mobley and, and Jared Allen out there, they're going to combine for like 30 rebounds a game and you're not having a traditional center out there. And yeah, the Magic, I get it. They had a good season. They're a little bit inexperienced. Maybe it's just the nerves, whatever it is. But just from a process standpoint, what is this lineup that they're putting out there with Isaac as the de facto center? Stop giving mins to Joe Ingles and get Carter and Mo Wagner in there to grab some rebounds and give them a shot. Yeah, I, I think this is a team... In Orlando, more than anything, they have to look at their roster. And I, I think the center point is is true. They don't have black they don't have a real roster. They have real pieces that you can be excited about. They don't have a legitimate point guard and they don't have a legitimate center that they can trust. They don't have like Paolo Bencaro leading that team in rebounds is not wow, Paolo's awesome. It's wow, this is an issue. Paolo Bencaro leading that team in assists is not wow, Paolo's awesome. It's, oh, my gosh, we don't have a real point guard. And I like Jalen Suggs. He's a great player. He should probably be a hyper sixth man for that basketball team. Then, you know, again, a def- he's I, – I hope this doesn't sound negative. He's kind of – it's Patrick Beverly adjacent. That's not okay. ideal. You will never want Pat Bev leading your offense. Jalen Suggs is not that. And Paolo Bencaro is not a LeBron, Luka, just because he's six foot nine type of situation. All right, Tom, talk to me uh, as far as the hockey goes tonight. Four games tonight. Anything you're looking for? Yeah, I think the Predators come away with the win. They played, you know, really well for the first 40, 45 minutes, 50 minutes of game one. Kind of threw it away in the end yeah. the end of the third. So, like, Predators come away with the win. Thatcher Demko, the starting goalie for the Canucks, has been ruled out. And he apparently might be out for the entire series. So, Luke Evangelista, over two and a half shots in goal, sitting at plus 108. 
you know, quietly, he has moved up the lineup. He's now on the second forward line, first power play. He's piling up the shots. He has at least two shots on goal in 17 of the last 20 games to end the regular season. He had five shots on goal in game one. I think they come away with the win. Uh, no, I wouldn't be surprised if he scores goals tonight. I think it's at like plus 310. They come away with the win, uh, probably the under when it comes to uh, Florida, Tampa again. And then I actually wouldn't be surprised to see Rangers caps going over. The caps are already down two defensemen. They lost another defenseman in game one and they had to call up some players. So their back blue line is not looking good. And John Carlson's probably going to play 28 minutes tonight. Uh, question before we let you go. Um, I, any major takeaway from the Oilers, more specifically what McDavid did last night, the five assists, just a dominant performance? It's it's just, I'm not going to be impressed until they face like a, a real tough defense, you know, not the Kings. So like do that in the first few rounds, sure. But as we get to the conference finals, if they make it there, you know, then, then talk to me. My takeaway from what Tom says, though, is keep betting the McDavid one and a half two plus points. And at the end of the day, we'll go from there. Tom, great stuff as always. We'll just keep talking baseball, NBA next year. Game time decision. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular pink side bed, a, 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 a posturepedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Live on Sports Grid, it is a Tuesday night. I'm Kevin Walsh with you. A lot to go through on this Tuesday. I figure we set the table, though, uh, with NBA picks, and then we will go from there. We're going to have some Major League Baseball. Uh, a few items that have been catching my eye. Uh, so we're going to go through all of that. But let me put my three favorite NBA picks on the board. Uh, the NBA tonight begins uh, with, excuse me, Minnesota and Phoenix. The Timberwolves, a three-point favorite here, total 211 and a half. And I'm going back to a market that was successful last night. A uh, different player uh, in LeBron, under three and a half turnovers. Uh, but similar situation with Kevin Durant, under three and a half turnovers. Uh, this is certainly not a number Kevin Durant goes over with any type of consistency here. But he did go over it in game number one. I think, first of all, there is something to the idea of, I mean, playoff certified doesn't even begin to tell the story on a player like Kevin Durant, right? But a super mega established star like KD coming off of a bad turnover game 
ensuring that they protect the basketball. LeBron last night went from seven turnovers down to two. Paolo Bancaro is going to struggle turning the basketball over, right? Halliburton might have some bad turnover games. Tyrese Maxey, KD should not allow five, four or five turnovers to be a common occurrence. But I also feel like this game kind of lends itself to Durant not really being in a position to turn it over. Because Durant was the guy of the trio by a lot in game number one. So this is probably going to go one of two ways. Perhaps Durant being the guy that much is by design. And Minnesota is almost saying, KD, think what happened with Zach Eady in the national title game. Where UConn actually said, no, Eady scoring 30-35 is good for us. Perhaps there's a world where the Minnesota Timberwolves feel no, Kevin Durant can score 30. It's going to be a bunch of mid-range jumpers. Keep other guys out of it. Not the passer that Devin Booker or Bradley Beal are. We're happy with this. And if that's the case, then Katie's touches should be a bit easier, and he'll ease into the series, and he shouldn't be in the position to turn it over as much. But I actually feel that this game, and I'm not playing a Durant under, but I feel like this should be a, a others game, Beal and Booker. I shouldn't probably call those two players others, but you get the point where Devin Booker's coming off of an awful game. He's really struggled against Minnesota this season. And it's a little, I don't want to say now or never, it can be a long series, but if you're Devin Booker and you're aware that this team has really held you well underneath your standard, look, don't forget, Devin Booker last postseason was the third best player overall. Jokic, Jimmy, and then Devin. I mean, go back and look what he did in those series against the Clippers and even against the Denver Nuggets. So if Devin steps up, That's more ball-handling responsibilities, and Beal needs to step up. So I think KD could play a little more off-ball catch-and-shoot. In this basketball game, we're going under the three-and-a-half turnovers. Damian Lillard, your numbers play here, over one-and-a-half first-quarter rebounds. First of all, Dame is going to play the full 12 minutes. It's what he did in the opening game and grabbed three rebounds. But this is also a trend that's built up through Dame's reps without Giannis. Nine regular season games, seven of nine over this number, and this is a plus 100 prop. He averages one and a half first quarter rebounds on the season. So the books aren't going to shoot this number through the moon, certainly not yet, but it looks like we have ourselves a little edge here. Wish I found this in game number one, but I found it here in game number two. Give me Dame early on the glass over one and a half first quarter rebounds, and then my favorite of the three, but I really like all three, would be Luka Doncic over nine and a half assists. Luka with 40 minutes on the board in game number one. I think it could be very similar tonight here against the L.A. Clippers. 22 regular season games with 40 or more minutes. 19 of 22. 19 and 3. That would be Luka over 9.5 assists in games with 40 or more minutes in this regular season. You're getting this at a plus price. And the last five times in the regular season, where Luka had six or fewer assists the game prior. He followed that up with a double-digit assist night in four of the five. So I think you're going to see Luka Doncic really step up here by getting others involved. The points will be there. We know they will. But I think those points could come a little bit more in the fourth quarter, close it out style. I will say, and we can expand on this, I think you'll see road teams go 2-1 and one tonight. This, look, if we're going to get to a spot, because here's the thing, after tonight, the only uh, game two left is Boston, and they're laying a gazillion. We get out of here tonight, right? And let's just, you know, I know it's silly maybe to assume the Boston thing, but if we get Boston on the board tomorrow, what do you get, 16-0 and home team? Come on, now we're going to get some upsets on this board. We're live with you. It's Game Time Decisions on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. 
the New York team has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports screen. I mean, they're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would say a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a prosopedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, no thing. He's ready to roll. Denominate tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. We're live with you right here on Sports Grid. We're making it happen. It's game time decisions. We're looking to get in the mix. Uh, we're looking for some bases. We're looking for some money lines here. Uh, there's a couple of interesting spots, and of course, it is Dinger Tuesday on your baseball board. We're going to continue to reset some things in the NBA. Top of the hour, Joe Madden joins us to talk some NHL tonight. We'll get to the NFL draft as well. Don't you worry. We'll get to the draft a few times here. A lot of movement. Uh, I will tell people this, because, of course, want to give you guys the action as it comes in. I mentioned my Roma Dunze under uh, over 8.5 draft position bet. Uh, that is, so far, still the only bet I've made. And as I said, played it light. want to wait to get to tomorrow or Thursday. We're going to be live at 7.30 Thursday night. We're going to go through our cards, of course, but because we know that odds will change when it comes to the draft and they can change quickly, uh, I will also be sure to try and send all those tweets out uh, at the Kevin Walsh so you guys can kind of follow along with any of the information uh, that you might need there in those markets and uh, just trying to get involved as much as we can uh, with the NFL draft. But because information is king, Right, you know, getting the best of the number is of course important, but it's more than getting just the best of the number. We want to get the right pick. I don't. I'll lay a minus two hundred if it's the right pick. Right. So we're going to continue to let that develop. Before we get to the baseball board, I want to bring Davis Maddock in the mix here as he gets people set tonight. Clippers Mavs style same game parlay. All right, guys, we are back with another same game parlay over on the FanDuel Sportsbook. We are going to go back to the NBA tonight, game two with the Dallas Mavericks traveling to play at the Los Angeles Clippers. We are going to begin this same game parlay by taking the Mavericks minus two and a half points on the spread. I think without Kawhi Leonard, the Mavericks are the better team. Luka Doncic is the best player in the series. And our second leg is going to be taking Luka not to score 25, 30, 35, but 40 or more points in this game. I think that the Clippers are going to get roasted if they repeat their defense from game one, where they had Ivacha Zubac just drop way below the screen, almost all the way down in the paint when the Mavericks would initiate their pick and roll and just trusted the guards to fight through their screens. That type of coverage is not going to work against Luke. I think we see an absolute explosion from him here from three-point range. So, Dallas Mavericks minus two and a half points and Luka Doncic to record 40 or more points in this game. That gives us plus 405 odds. Good luck tonight, everybody. Great stuff there from Davis. Appreciate the breakdown. Uh, I do want to let people know that the line right now for Clippers Mavs, it's one that has been on the move a little bit. Uh, it is one and a half to one, depending on where you look. Uh, again, it is incredible that we are three and a half hours out from this game and we do not know if the Clippers' best player will play in Kawhi Leonard. 
what I will tell people, and I know he was at shoot-around, I know that video came out, but Kawhi really is a one-of-one guy when it comes to stuff like this. And you kind of can't trust anything. Like, until he is out there, I would not say, okay, like, Kawhi being at shoot-around does not guarantee Kawhi plays in this series for me. People can disagree. What I would say is, if you now feel a level of confidence on the Clippers because you're saying, oh, even if Kawhi doesn't play tonight, we're going to get him in game three. Latest, we're going to get him in game four, which I still don't believe. But flip over to that Clippers series price, right? It's minus 178. They will flip to a dog if they lose tonight. But if they win, you're going around minus 350. And if, if, if you're just a your Kawhi better, I get it. Now, that's not what I'm doing because I don't really care if Kawhi plays. I really don't. And also, even if Kawhi plays, how are you going to be in a position to say, well, we know Kawhi's also not only going to play, he's going to finish this thing out. We know that we've got Kawhi now for the length of this series. Remember, Kawhi was healthy last year when the playoffs started and then only was able to play the two games against the Phoenix Suns. Now, I know for a lot of people, all they really care about is, well, Kawhi was healthy for the two games and was awesome for the two games and outplayed Durant for the two games. Yes, all of that is true. But what does it matter if he's not actually out there and on the court and playing and putting up that production for people? It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a dent whatsoever. That Kawhi was awesome last year in the playoffs, or he's awesome in his postseason career. Yes, Kawhi is objectively incredible in his postseason career. He's a multi-time finals MVP. That's a short list of people. And he did it with two separate franchises. So you give him a world of credit. But he's been given the benefit of the doubt so long now. I've made this point countless times with Clippers prices. Just this comfortable assumption that we know, oh, well, Kawhi's going to be, Kawhi's going to be back. Kawhi's going to be back. And when Kawhi is back, he's going to be incredible. Or, oh, as soon as they're healthy, everything's going to be fine. We don't know that. We don't know that. Because it's not as if healthy Kawhi in L.A. has amounted to anything. Hel- Kawhi Leonard has never played a Western Conference Finals game as a Clipper. That's a fact. But so often we just kind of we remove that for what he did as a Raptor. And I don't know why, but it's what we do. Let's talk some Major League Baseball here. One bit of action that's going to uh, get our first pitch underway in two minutes here. Uh, that's going to be the pick on the Cincinnati Reds. Abbott at home tonight. There's two home dogs uh, in Major League Baseball that I'm going to give a shot on. That's the Cincinnati Reds, and that's also the Texas Rangers. I don't mind the Rangers' price here. I understand Logan Gilbert's great. I like Texas coming back home off of a series in Atlanta. Everybody knows, best team in Major League Baseball. I think getting uh, a almost plus price, minus 102 on Texas is worth it, and we're also playing that Reds' money line. Uh, at plus 114. Mention the Atlanta Braves. Best bet tonight is going to be uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. over one and a half total bases. This is minus 120. I'm also going to play Acuna Jr. for Dinger Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to get those prices for people at the top of the next break, so just give it a moment there. But I I know it's a little gimmicky now that Acuna Jr. has been a play on Dinger Tuesday three or four times. But going up against the lefty Trevor Rogers, Acuna's got great numbers against him, and hitting in Atlanta tonight should be there. You know, he's going to get a ton of at-bats, batting at the top of that order. I like what we're going to get out of Acuna Jr. tonight. The other guy I'm going to look to play, now, I'll say there is a little, it goes a little bit against the typical trend and approach for Dinger Tuesday of Tom Vecchio's pick on the Chicago Cubs, Michael Bush, is not only great because Bush can put one out, but if the wind's blowing out at Wrigley, you're going to be in this great position to maybe get five home, to get your five home runs and get back your coin. If, uh, you know, Ronald Acuna Jr. doesn't go deep, but only, and we only get two home runs, we're not getting back the full value. I trust Ronald Acuna Jr. tonight, though. So I'm going to play Ronald Acuna Jr., and I'm looking at a New York Yankee as well. They're matched up with the Oakland Athletics. By the way, we didn't shout it out when it happened, and we should have, uh, but Nerfy, Cleveland, Boston, my, oh, my, do we even have a hit in this game? We got a few, but it's the top of the third inning. It's still scoreless. Easy as you like. Was there any danger? Two out single, did nothing with it, and three up, three down for the Guardians. That's fantastic work there. 
We've put the people on the board already on a Tuesday night. I take no credit for that. The folks in the back making it happen. That's all we can do. So we love to see that here. Uh, again, also coming up at this 640 window is Milwaukee and Pittsburgh here. Uh, the Brewers are uh, a favorite on the road. Uh, 645, we've got Washington at home against the L.A. Dodgers, plus 188 on Patrick Corbin. Uh, the Dodgers right now, that run line, minus 138. Totals 10 there, expected to hit Patrick Corbin. And at 650, you've got the Tampa Bay Rays, nearly minus 170 on their money line against the Detroit Tigers. Total for that one checks in at an 8 as Kenta Maeda gets the ball for the Tigers. That 7 o'clock window will begin with Yankees Athletics, uh, and then we'll soon see the Atlanta Braves and the Miami Marlins where that Ronald Acuna Jr. MLB play of the day will check in. Coming up next, though, here on Game Time Decisions, we start to take the overview look at these series that sit 2-0 and where the value is. Yes, more talk. Can't wait about the Lakers and their 2-0 deficit for the second straight year for the Denver Nuggets. What's next? says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings. And ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sitting on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a possipedic, whatever they call it, a ceiling, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Back to right here on Game Time Decisions. We're going to set up the 2-0 series in the NBA in a moment. Just to finish up that baseball card. Moneyline, Dogs, are Reds, Rangers. Singer Tuesday picks Aaron Judge, Ronald Acuna Jr. I am playing both of them for two-plus bases, with Ronald Acuna Jr. at minus 120 being the MLB play of the day. I am also on Gunnar Henderson over uh, one-and-a-half bases as well. Uh, Ronald, uh, no, 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 excuse me, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for a run scored, and Pete Alonso under one-and-a-half hits, runs, and RBIs late night against Logan Webb. like the baseball board here on a Tuesday. We'll talk a little baseball uh, with Joe Madden in 15 minutes, so make sure you stay dialed right here on Game Time Decisions. But a chance to reset series prices and then reset some series leaders. Uh, we'll start this off. Again, all three of these series sit now 2-0 for the home team. The Knicks, minus 520. You're getting plus 370 here 
on the Philadelphia 76ers. A tempting number, certainly, because Philly and the fact that they could very well be up 2-0 in this series. And for the Philadelphia 76ers, getting back home, you feel that they are going to be able to flex the muscle a little bit. What's important for Philly and won't be true, we'll talk Lakers in a moment, is the Sixers will be favorites at home. That's a big swing. You are backing a team who is supposed to win games four or three, four, and six. And if you get to a seventh game, your plus 370 ticket operating as a money line is plenty of value. I think Sixers series spread prices would be interesting. We did finally get updated point scoring leaders in this series. We'll talk about that in a moment. Let's talk Lakers. <laughs> this is very real frustration with this Lakers Nuggets series. Look, I am the most unbiased man in the history of sports media. But I'm a fan of what I'm a fan of, and you all know I'm a LeBron James fan. I would like for the Lakers to win these games. Wasn't on the Lakers last night. I worried about them in the game two spot, ultimately. They should have closed the door. They didn't close the door. They got themselves another cover in Denver despite not grabbing a win. And now you see the Lakers at plus 920. It's fascinating. Because there's, I feel, moments where if we remove the players, we might look at it and go, hold on a minute. So this Lakers team was super competitive in Denver. When this series flips back to L.A., they should be money. Home court advantage should matter, especially because of how huge Denver's is, right? Get Denver out of altitude, and the Lakers should be able to win their home game. But that confidence isn't there. The best expectation that many are giving the Lakers is they'll win one of the two games in L.A. and be moved off quite easily in Game 5. For the L.A. Lakers, the thing is, it's hard to feel like Game 4 matters. If the Lakers go down 3-0, are they really going to show enough fight to win Game 4? They showed that fight last year. LeBron played nearly the entire basketball game, and it still wasn't enough. They lost the game by by one or two points. Uh, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. So what do you play here? Truly, what do you play here? If you like Denver in Game 3, you play the sweep. If you like them in Game 3, you play the sweep. Because if they win Game 3, they'll be favorites in Game 4. The line's going to be interesting to watch for Game number 3 here. I think Laker money could come in. But if you like Denver in Game 3, be greedy and go for a sweep once again. We'll throw up Magic Cavs here. We're going to talk some series leaders uh, in this one as well. We'll throw up Magic Cavs. Now, series leaders are not as interesting. Jared Allen has completely run away with the rebounds. It is Donovan Mitchell against Van Caro for the points. I'm hoping getting back home for Van Caro could be some cure-all. This is going to be a tempting. This Orlando Magic team is going to be tempting, I really believe, in at home. I do not think Orlando gets swept. So that means, of course, winning one of game three or four. Could they win both? They could win both. I think this is kind of a scenario, though, where, and you, you guys know I, I prefer to take when I can. It might be a scenario where you just play money lines, though, right? Because that way, if you play Magic Money Line game three, if you lose, you play it game four, and you can come out profitable on the situation. That's something that I'm looking for for that series when we resume it. But I mentioned some series leader action. Finally, Nick's series uh, total point score is up. And here's how the numbers look. Minus 250, Joel Embiid. Plus 400, Tyrese Maxey, and plus 450, Jalen Brunson. Now, this is only available at the moment on DraftKings. I would like to wait to make any plays here for FanDuel to post the numbers, and they actually have. Um, And, oh, my goodness, we're going to get in the mix. Look, this is real time. Because at last look, which was about an hour and a half ago, we didn't have numbers between books. Here is what I've learned. And I know some people have their preference of book, but if you can, extend your arm, right? And between FanDuel and DraftKings, this is not copy-paste from one book to another. 
here are your most updated numbers because people put some bets in on DraftKings. Minus 240 and B on DraftKings. Minus 175 on FanDuel. Plus 330 on DraftKings, Tyrese Maxey. Plus 330. Plus 190 on FanDuel. Here is the crown jewel and almost assuredly the bet I'm going to end up making. Plus 475, Jalen Brunson on DraftKings. Plus 850 on FanDuel. That's what I've been looking for. Now, Brunson is at a very real deficit. He trails not only Embiid by 17, he trails Tyrese Maxey by 22 points. Does Brunson have a 40 ball in him? I think he does. Is it going to be better value to bet Brunson to score 40? We'll see. Again, I'm in real time getting the real number that I've been waiting for which is exciting. Plus 850 Brunson to lead this series in total points. Potentially, we get in the mix. Full series prices in Nick Sixers is what the people have been waiting on. We'll talk a little bit more about it. We hit a break. We're live with you on Sports Grid. It's game time decision. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second-best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a posturepedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. Back with you right here on Sports Grid. Uh, I spent our very lengthy two minute break going through our Sixers Knicks props. And the disparity within the points leaders is not the only market where you can find a disparity. And I'm trying to figure out what the move might be. So the three-point leader in the series, so through two games, here's how it looks. Maxie and Josh Hart are tied at eight apiece. Then beneath that are Dante DiVincenzo and Kyle Lowry at six apiece. Now, Josh Hart, is not expected to shoot threes at this clip. And they're somewhat looking past Hart. Kyle Lowry is also not supposed to make threes at this clip, uh, 6 of 12. So the idea would be Axie against Steven Chenzo. 
DiVincenzo usually the stronger prop, but Dante DiVincenzo kind of fell off uh, or fell behind early on in this series due to a lack of minutes in game number one. So he's two back. And on one book, Maxi minus 105, DiVincenzo plus 170. On another book, Maxi plus 145, DiVincenzo minus 205. That's very interesting and something I'd love to ask Dave Sharapat about, which we will. Uh, he'll join us in hour number two, as will Joe Madden. So certainly stuff that we can keep our eye on when we get there. Uh, I mentioned I am on an Anthony Edwards series uh, total threes uh, leader. This is a really nice spot here. So we've got Anthony Edwards with four mates. He is tied with Royce O'Neal and Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Uh, Naw is at 15-1. to 1. I took a piece of that as well. I'll tell you, I'm even interested in grabbing a little bit of a piece of Grayson Allen's 13-1. to Grayson has the highest ceiling of any of these three-point shooters in a singular game. You could argue Devin maybe has a six-make ceiling, but it's on, you know, six of eight shooting, six of nine shooting from three, where Grayson Allen might give you six of 12 twice. And you can find that Grayson Allen number 13-1. to I think I'm ultimately actually going to make that addition just even as I sit here, because at another book, that number is down to plus 650. So I'm going to make that addition as well. Here's the thing, though, with Anthony Edwards in relation to the two guys that he is competing against the most with, which would be Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant shot 100% from three in game one. 100%. Think about that. Okay? He's at two makes. You can't win this market if you're shooting Two attempts per game. That is an that it's it's a dead shot. You're drawing completely dead if that's how this goes. And Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, for that matter, don't step up their volume in three point shot attempts to some incredible degree. It's one of the flaws of this basketball team. Ultimately, it's why there's concerns about them crossing the finish line or even getting through this series. Is in the modern NBA. Do they shoot enough? That that is a very real question that which people have. So I I'm playing Anthony Edwards, who last year in the playoffs averaged over eight attempts per game from beyond the arc. I just think that makes plenty of sense there. I'm happy with that. So Anthony Edwards, who was four of eight, if we're just going to continuously get eight attempts, and I think it could be more in some games, right? he's going to have multiple double-digit attempts, attempt games in this series, then I'm all good with that. Here's what I just did, and I did this as we are talking. I'm playing Anthony Edwards plus 220 as the main bet, right? Call it two units, right? For half of that, play Grayson Allen at 13-1, to one, and for half of that, play Nikal Anders, uh, Nikal Alexander-Walker at 15-1. to one. And you can basically call it Devin and Durant won't win this market. Royce O'Neal at four, okay, I'm fading him as well. Nas Reed has a price. I don't expect Nas Reed to contain for most threes made here. Grayson Allen's the really tempting one. If you told me I could only bet one of these, and funny enough, it may be Grayson Allen's 13 because of that ceiling that Grayson has from beyond the arc. And, of course, we're going to flip back to Phoenix soon, right? We've got more upcoming Phoenix games than Minnesota games, if you think about it, right, in, in the near future. So that's tempting to me. 20, uh, plus 220, Anthony Edwards, 13-1, to 1, Grayson Allen, off 15-1. to 1. You just kind of structure it to however you'd like. If you wanted to leave, here, I'm not leaving out Naw because what he does defensively is important for this team, and he's going to fire away. So I wouldn't discard any of those guys. Joe Madden joins us in two minutes. We break down Rangers Capitals next. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. 
But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. I mean, they're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would say a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a friend with pink side effect, a, 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 a partial penis, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Let's get right to it. Game time decisions live on a Tuesday night. Kevin Walsh joined now by Joe Madden as we have playoff hockey about to start off here, Joe. At Madison Square Garden, the Rangers minus 285 on the money line. Huge price against the Caps. What do you see here for game two? After what we saw in game one, the Rangers absolutely deserve to be this big as a favorite. They were able to get that win four to one. But I do think in game two here, Alex Ovechkin ends up getting on the scoreboard. I'm going to take him for that anytime goal. His anytime goal is coming in up plus 200. You could also look at him for the power play point. That's coming in up plus 240. When we look at Ovechkin in the first game, he was held off the board and he wasn't able to get those shots on goal. The Rangers had 21 block shots on goal. Five of those were shots Ovechkin was trying to take on the net. You know, he's going to come out here frustrated and be looking to find the back of Igor Sisterkin's net. I do think he's able to get there in this one. It was only the fourth time in his whole NHL career in the playoffs that he's being held off not getting those shots and that's 148 games you guys so i do think ovechkin makes a difference for the capitals at the end of the day i don't think it's enough i'm gonna go with a play that we played in game one as well the no goals in the first 10 minutes i do think comes into play in this one it's plus 106 kevin Uh, all right let's get in the mix there early on rangers capitals i laid that puck line the first game if you made me i'd actually would take it here Right, Joe mentions lower scoring hockey, and I played the Rangers in a spot trend wise. Look, the Rangers won 30 games at home. It, that was not an overabundance of puck lines covered overall. So I'd be cautious uh, on that number, which was a plus in game one and is a minus in game number two. Let's get to Florida, Tampa Bay, Joe. We'll talk McDavid uh, in a couple of moments just because I'm curious what you thought of the performance. But his counterpart in that 100 assist club this season, Nikita Kucherov, the Lightning, and their offense need to pick it up. Do you think they will? Yeah, absolutely. I think the Tampa Bay Lightning are a dangerous team and have every opportunity of pulling off the win here. I'm looking at taking them straight up on that money line, but I'm also looking for those fireworks in the first period. Out of both of these teams, I love the over one and a half in the first period. You're laying light juice at minus 116. We did see it cash in the last game with these teams doing run and gun style hockey right out of the gate and I think that we get that in this one now you mentioned Nikita Kucherov he was not able to get a goal in the last game he did record an assist with how strong the power play is here 
for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm going to look at him for the power play point in this one. That's coming in at plus 110. When we look at the last game, so highly physical out there between both of these teams, we saw the Tampa Bay Lightning be able to put six hits on the Florida Panthers. The Panthers reacting back with 56 both teams were able to convert once on the power play so it is crucial for these teams to stay out of that box play clean smart hockey out there but i do think the lightning have the opportunity to get the win that first period look for the fireworks take the over one and a half kevin all right now let's talk Connor mcdavid because we have plenty of time before these other games start joe was on the two plus points and sometimes Right, you hit a bet, and it goes really well, and you feel great. Other times, it goes so well, you feel a, you're like, now what am I doing? Like I was like, why didn't I have four plus assists and five plus assists? Which is ridiculous to think, but McDavid was so unbelievable in that game. I'm curious what you think that means for him and the Oilers moving forward in this series. It's not about the Oilers. Also, not about the hang they prepared in that. That one, Talbert not looking strong enough net. I love what we saw out of Connor, but in your right, clearing up those player problems, a player like that, even if you put a half a unit on your main bet and then a Grabbing it quickly here, uh, some technical difficulties, which behind the curtain, surprising. Joe's set up typically pristine. Two days in a row, sabotage, people are asking. People are asking. I don't blame Joe. I know that much. Uh, I believe Joe is back. Uh, and, Joe, you were talking a little Connor McDavid, Edmonton Oilers. Uh, and what do you make of that fi- five-assist performance last night? Yeah, I think it was absolutely incredible. And he's a player that you do have to look at laddering up when you're betting on him. Putting a half a unit on your original uh, main bet and then laddering the next two levels up, I think, is a really solid way to go, Kevin. I don't know if he'll have as much success in the next game. I think Cam Talbot really has to give his head a shake with what we saw, as well as the defense out of the L.A. Kings. But if he's going to have success, it's going to be on his home ice in that series and i do think you look at him again for another strong performance i'd maybe look at the player points and laddering those uh, all right listen uh that performance from mcdavid uh was absolutely phenomenal so i look forward to game number two uh we've got game two for winnipeg and colorado joe you told people uh cash you know be cautious back in colorado in that opener but it looks like to me unless there's some injury news and, and i could be naive here uh, betters are saying No way Colorado loses again. Minus 125. That's a considerable flip from what we saw for that first game. What do you make here with Avs Winnipeg? Just disrespectful to the Winnipeg Jets. They were able to come away with the win in the last game. They played phenomenally strong. And you look at the goaltending. These goaltenders are on a different level. Connor Hellebach in there faced 55 shots on goal from the Colorado Avalanche. And Gordiev looked terrible out there in net for the abs i do think the abs need to win in a higher scoring battle like we saw in game one winnipeg cannot play that style of game again they're gonna get themselves in trouble leaning on a higher scoring one i'm looking for the winnipeg jets here at home to win another game and i am looking for this one to stay under the six and a half that is not the style of game that the winnipeg jets can come out and play in And I do think this is a lower scoring one. Now, both teams were physical. Colorado was able to score on their power play opportunities on two of them. Winnipeg was able to score on the one of them as well. But another really physical game out there. You look at Colorado. They had 55 hits on the Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets returning 46. It was mayhem out there on the ice. I think we still have some mayhem, but not a high scoring one, Kevin. Uh, and then, Joe, we've got this game between the Predators uh, late night here against the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, this is a close line at minus 130 for the home Vancouver squad. Five and a half is the total. Well, Demko out here for the Vancouver Canucks, and this is not what Vancouver needed in the playoffs. I really do think the Nashville Predators, I liked them before even finding out that Demko would not be in goal. Now, without Demko 
in goal and Casey to Smith stepping up. Well, he's a confident goalie. He's not at the Demco level. I think the Nashville Predators, especially off a loss, will return a favor here and be able to pick up a road win in Vancouver. I'm looking at the Predators with the plus money that you can get on them on the money line. And I do like their team total. Their team total is only set at two and a half, the over two and a half coming in at minus 118, I think is a really solid way. This team has so many playmakers on it. I'd look at uh, Philip Forsberg here for the anytime goal. We know Ryan O'Reilly was able to get on the scoreboard in the last one. I do think you have those strengths of those players coming out nice and strong. Now, Saros will be in goal for the Nashville Predators, and this team has the ability to lock down Vancouver and Vancouver's team total is at three and a half. The only problem with that is the juice. It's too juiced at minus one sixty four to the under. I expect them to stay under that total. I would expect the Preds to win this probably four to two. The reverse of what we saw when Vancouver got the win the other day. Uh, now we mentioned big Oilers result because the McDavid performance is what really stood out to me. But in terms of importance. Toronto beating Boston, Joe, and perhaps the confidence that that gave that team quickly. What did you make of what the Maple Leafs did against the Bruins? It was a night and day game out there for the Toronto Maple Leafs. We saw them come out with so much drive, so much passion out there on the ice, and they didn't let it get to them when the Boston Bruins were able to put the goals on the board like we saw in that first game. So for Toronto to take it back home, tied up 1-1, I do have some faith in them here. All right, listen, we're going to continue to break down a lot tonight with the baseball board coming up with Joe Madden next. Gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will take a long series from the Oilers and the Kings. And ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a possipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. Be ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. We do have some bit of breaking NBA news, which is the most improved player award uh, has been released, and it goes to Tyrese Max for cash those tickets. I know a lot of people got involved with that market uh, with the James Harden rumors, and uh, they were repaid. Kobe White ultimately falls short here, uh, but not by a lot. 319 total voting points for Maxi, 305 for Kobe White. 
Alperin Shangoon, had he not been injured, would have been in the mix more. Jalen Brunson, an interesting fifth-place finisher uh, in that race there. Uh, all in all, uh, fifth place could be a theme for Jalen Brunson. Uh, it is Dinger Tuesday, people. Uh, we are hopefully going to be sending uh, Aaron Judge to the plate soon and his plus 265 price. Uh, and eventually we will also have Ronald Jr. at bat with his plus 420 price for us on this Dinger Tuesday. Joe Madden here to break down some baseball. Joe, uh, are you participating uh, in Dinger Tuesday at all here today? Not today. I don't have anyone I'm liking. You know I'm holding off on Aaron Judge till his birthday on Friday, oh, and then right. I will try to take him. I'm not going to be greedy and try to hit him twice this week. I feel great. This is fantastic, whether he hits the home run or not. You mentioned the Judge birthday thing last week. I said I'll probably just bet him on Dinger Tuesday. I forgot, but clearly burned in the back of my brain was bet Aaron Judge. Fantastic. I feel even better about it. Let's talk some ball here. Uh, we've got Royals Blue Jays. Uh, which yesterday we saw Toronto take the opening game. What do you see with uh, another matchup between these squads? So we're here for the Toronto Jays, sending Kevin Gosman up to the ground. He has assembled this in a while. It's all in the last game. I don't know much. We're going to do a quick reset there for Joe. Uh, look, if you're, a, if you're a fan of game time decisions, you're going you're gonna to have to battle through the elements. And, you know, we, uh, we apologize for that, but it's momentary. Quick reset, quick refresh, and before you know it, we're back with Joe Madden breaking down Blue Jays Royals. Uh, Joe, uh, if you please. Okay, so looking at this one, I don't know how much I trust Kevin Gosman coming out here for Toronto while he looks solid versus the Yankees. I don't know how long he can stay solid because looking at him overall in the season, he has been picked apart. His ERA is north of eight. And Michael Wacha coming out here for the Royals. I think both of these pitchers spell a recipe of an over in this one. I'm looking for a higher scoring one. Light juice on the over. It's minus 102 to the over eight and a half. And that's where I have to go. We know that the Toronto Blue Jays have the ability to get those runs on the board. I think they have that run production today and the Royals add to it as well, hitting nicely off of Gosman. So give me the over eight and a half in this one, Kevin. Uh, all right, looking for the over there. Uh, Joe, we've got uh, the Chicago Cubs at home tonight uh, in an interesting matchup with the Houston Astros who have been fade material all season for the same. Yeah, looking at this one, Kevin, I've got to fade the Houston Astros here. The Cubs are a hard team to go against off a loss. They're so strong off of that loss, going 6-2 and two off a loss, and they are coming off that versus the Mariners. J.P. France, he has a high ERA. His ERA sitting here at 7.08. I can't trust him, and I do think the Cubs can answer back in this one. we got a home dog in the Cubs at plus 102, and I know the Astros have been able to be strong versus the Cubs. They have won five of the last six meetings. I don't see it happening in this one. I think this is another game where we see France struggle and the really big struggles came in his first game out and I know he's done better in the last couple but I tell you the Cubs off a loss are too dangerous for me they've also been so strong at home Kevin right, we've got some late night baseball here uh, involving the Baltimore Orioles Los Angeles Angels on uh, Gunnar Henderson uh, over one and a half base at the top. Uh, what are you betting in this game I'm sorry, Kevin. I didn't hear you. Which game are you talking about? Uh, it's all good. It's a natural disaster uh, here, but we're going to contrive our team. Can you hear me now? I might as well sort of. Check. Sort of. Less than yeah, great. This, this uh, is but great. We're going <laughs> to. Yeah, no, it's going great. Joe, can you tell us about the late night picks you have for the baseball? Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking at the Baltimore Orioles versus the LA Angels. I am going to play on Grayson Rodriguez here over on his strikeout number. His strikeout number coming in at six and a half. I know it's high at minus 114, but I do think here versus the Angels, he's going to be able to get this. Now, he did face them in the season debut, coming out being able to strike out nine Angels uh, batters. And I do think in this one, he is able to have similar production. I don't think he goes quite as high. We did see him get seven versus the Pirates in his second game out, and he hasn't hit over this in the last two, but I do expect that production here versus the Angels. 
looking at the late game between the Mets and the San Francisco Giants. I love Logan Webb here at home, and I do think the Giants have the ability to be able to get this win. we got to lay the juice with the Giants, and I'm a big fan of looking for some plus money and some other ways to tackle these games. So looking at the first five innings, I do think with Severino coming out here for the Mets, we have a lower scoring one. I'm going to take the first five innings under three and a half between the Mets and the Giants at coming in at minus 106. I would be cautious with the full game because like I said yesterday, even though that one didn't go over that total, I still don't really trust the Giants' bullpen, but huge fan of Logan Webb and Severino to come out strong. And I do think you can look at the Nerfie in this one. You just got to lay the juice on the Nerfie. That's coming in at minus 145, Kevin. But this should be a great game out there on the diamond. Awesome, awesome. Always, Joe, appreciate the breakdowns. Best of luck with the hockey and the late-night baseball. You too, Kevin. Thanks so much. Great stuff there from Joe. One update, and what is certainly a major upset on the baseball board, perhaps in this market, uh, the Nationals to score first. Again, the Dodgers, a minus 200 favorite on the road, and ultimately the Nats score on a suicide bun, it appears. I don't know. And maybe the Nationals just being the – Maybe, maybe maybe the Nationals will win the World Series. Happy to have weekend weekend warrior number one, Jesse Winker, from this winning squad that is the Washington Nationals. Judge at the plate. What if he hits it here? What if he hits it here? But, but look, could it be? When we come back, we hope it is. We're live on Sports Grid. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in that. So I would see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second-best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king-size bed, a, 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 a possibility, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, they don't think. He's ready to roll. Denominate tonight. Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. Back on Sports Grid. Appreciate everybody here sticking with us. Apologize for any of those tech difficulties there. Uh, but we're in the mix. We're on the board as well with an Aaron Judge double. I know that that is not. Uh, the dinger that we were hoping for, but it is the two-plus bases at plus 105 that we were hoping for. So I'll absolutely take that from Judge in the opening inning here. Uh, and it looks like uh, Giancarlo Stan followed up with a double of his own. 
to bring in both Soto and Judge. So that's good stuff early there. Uh, yes, runs first inning actually cash on the athletic side of it all. Uh, but nevertheless, let's talk some NFL draft. Let's talk Vikings. Let's talk Broncos. Let's talk Falcons. Let's start with the Minnesota Vikings. This is one of the most interesting numbers. Maybe telling is the, is the more appropriate word. With Minnesota at minus 250 for the position of their first drafted player. Now, this is an important uh, mark because the distinctions matter, right? We, we mentioned, you know, the Drake May odds to go third. It's not Drake May to go to New England. It's Drake May to go third. And Drake May could go third, and Minnesota could draft Drake May, and you kind of see how those numbers come into correlation. The Vikings trading up is being priced as a fact. And that's because here's how I see it, right? We've got Caleb at one. Let's go through the odds. Caleb at one. We know the Bears aren't trading. And Jaden Daniels at two through the odds. And Washington has said they're not trading. New England is willing to trade. We know this. But their reports are now, oh, the offers are laughable. The Patriots need a godfather offer, whatever it might be. But New England is willing to trade at three. Let's say they don't trade at third overall, right? Well, and they take the quarterback in Drake May. Is Minnesota going to select J.J. McCarthy? The market still believes the answer to that is yes. Where? At fourth overall? That would be an upset. The favorite right now is still Marvin Harrison Jr. Would they draft J.J. McCarthy at fifth? It wouldn't be as much of an upset because at fifth, there's nothing but headaches. Or maybe for the betters and less the books. But it's two to one or better on any guy you could possibly touch. Abers, Harrison, Alt, J.J. McCarthy. What happens, though, if Minnesota has not moved up to three, four, or five? Well, I'll come to New York Giants at six. In this scenario, let's say Marvin went off the board at four and Abers at five. The Giants at six didn't get one of the elite wide receivers. You would argue many, some, that Roma Dunze is a part of that class. But the quarterback and J.J. McCarthy is on the board. And the Giants want, and if <laughs> Acuna double, two plus bases, come on, get in here, get in here. We're excited about that. We love to see that weekend warrior on a Tuesday. Love that. That's where in the mix, people. You can only be in the mix. First inning, that's the way it's done. Basically, I win the MLB play of the day in the first inning where I don't win it at all. That's what I'm seeing these days. Anyway, Minnesota, if this team wants to get a quarterback, unless the Giants are bluffing about being interested in a quarterback drafting sixth, they need to come up to three, four, or five. It's something to keep an eye on because otherwise – they're going to have to take what? Bo Nix or Penix? That's not happening. It's not. It's not happening. So look for Minnesota to think about trading. And that's going to shift things. That's where that minus 250 number is important. Let's get over to the Denver Broncos. Fascinating. Because Denver is also tied to quarterback. Denver could possibly try and trade up for J.J. McCarthy. Maybe Drake May. That's going to cash your quarterback at plus 190. Nobody believes Denver at 12 is going to sit there and draft Bo Nix or draft Michael Penix Jr. What I'm starting to wonder, and what doesn't seem to be, everyone keeps talking about Denver trading up, right? But Denver doesn't have a lot of draft capital. Why would Denver not trade back multiple times? I know you could say it's easier said than done, but realistically, if you're Sean Payton, and you love Bo Nix or Penix, you can't get up there to grab McCarthy or Drake May or Jaden Daniels. Just trade back. But don't draft Dallas Turner at 12 or one of the tackles, Fashanu. That, that isn't the move, right? Taking Byron Murphy, going out there and, and drafting Quinion Mitchell. Wouldn't you just trade back stop, stock picks in that 26, take Bo Nix, then your quarterback, if that's what's available to you. We'll talk about this a little bit. It's a quick break. We're live right here on Sports
Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a friend of his side bed, a, 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 a posturepedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. Be ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Live right here on Sports Grid Game Time Decisions. Going to talk to Dave Sharapan in a moment. Finishing out the Denver Broncos conversation. The Denver Broncos potentially interested right, in quarterback. That's what the odds tell us here. The books are not sure. Could this team trade up? A lot of people think it's J.J. McCarthy. When we're talking trade up, we're always talking about going for quarterback. There's another spot where we could see trades. Let's look at the Atlanta Falcons. But it's not just the Falcons, right? It's, in fact, not the Falcons. It's number eight overall. What the books have here is basically now this battle between Latu, Latu at plus 250, and Dallas Turner at plus 250. What's happening is the Falcons are being linked to Latu, Latu. A defensive coach on their staff was with Latu at Washington, and that is leading to his name growing in the market. Dallas Turner sits there because he had been mocked to Atlanta for so long, and a lot of odds in him favored to be the first defensive player taken off of the board. But... If you're the Falcons, are you sitting here at eight? Because this third name here, and it would be a losing bet for me, Roma Dunze, if he's available, they're getting phone calls. From the Bears at nine, the Jets at 10, the Colts are giving a phone call at 15, Jags might give him a call at 17, Buffalo Bills want to go nuts, I doubt it. Should they get up from 28? Probably not. But the point is, if you're the Falcons, and you want an edge rusher. The, the, the overall consensus of this draft is you have time to take that player. And you would be passing up on BPA. That's what, and by the way, this J.J. McCarthy number is not here because they think he'd be a good backup to Kirk Cousins. That's also, okay, J.J.'s floor is eight. Because that call's coming in for Minnesota to get up to eight to get J.J. McCarthy. And that's kind of the stuff that we talk about with these betting markets right now and why they do not have it listed as who Falcons take is eight. Because to some degree, they could book that and then they'd pay out nothing. And everybody would push or void because the Falcons don't select at eighth. And this is something that we've talked about with Dave Sharapan and uh, why this draft betting stuff is always, uh, Dave, tricky waters to try and swim in because we're all trying to bet on information, and then one domino falls, and all that information becomes outdated. 
Yeah, exactly what you said. <laughs> it's it's uh, changes day to day. Thursday can't come soon enough. You and the boys will hold it down on the show, and the books will be closing. The books in Nevada close the uh, draft betting tomorrow. There's no betting on the draft on the day of the draft. So you have to get all your bets in uh, in Nevada on Wednesday, you know, so you can get it done. And nobody so, can walk in with a bag full of money, which has happened. Um, I've been at the counter when someone came in and said, I want to bet 10000 on, I forget who it was, to be the second pick in the draft. And I said, that would be great. I'd love to take it. The market's closed. So you guys will have a field day back east um, and in other parts of the world. But in Nevada, the, the stipulation with the Gaming Control Board was you can take bets on the draft, but you can't do it on the day of the draft. So you want to talk about markets, fluidity, things like that, Thursday should be fun. Now, is that, Dave, protection for the books on Thursday? What is the... What would the reason for that be? Um, it was a real, I think a couple years drawn out process with the gaming control board meetings as to why nobody could understand why anybody would want to take bets on the draft. And the gaming control board was like, hold on here. What do you guys want to do? Why would you even want to do this? Presenting yeah. both sides of the argument. The book said, yeah. well, people have been asking. You know, and we want to take bets on stuff that people ask about, so we should do it. And we did it, but the the middle ground was, okay, you can take bets on it, but you can't do it on the day of the draft. So, like I said, the market's closed Wednesday night. It's led to some contentious discussions at counters throughout Las Vegas, myself included. I wished we could take people's bets. I mean, I was trying to help the book and say, like, this is a this is not even gonna win. We should definitely take this bet. It didn't matter. Nothing could open back up. So little protection, I think, for both sides, K dub. I think that's really interesting. I, I think if you told people they could only bet the draft up until Wednesday it would be less popular. Because there's information that's gonna come out Thursday that's going to make the difference. Just yes. Case, right? You know, if you can if you can be patient enough. When Paolo Bancaro went first, huh. Woj tipped the pick while the markets were up. Like, full tip the pick, right before. Not like four hours earlier in the day. Like four minutes before the markets closed. And those things went bing, 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 unbettable off the board. Yeah, da -da 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 -da. The Adam Silver here with the first pick. Yeah, it was, a, it was a wild move. It really was. Yeah. So, I think that's very interesting that... But, but here's what I've always said to people. So people ask me, Dave asks me this sometimes. He does it tongue-in-cheek, though. He knows the answer. Can you bet on wrestling? Because everyone knows I'm a wrestling fan. You can, right? Here. Overseas you can, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people go, yep. how could you bet on wrestling? People know, like, don't, don't they know who's going to win? Is betting on wrestling that different from betting on the NFL draft? <laughs> No. In some regards, no. I don't no. think it is. In some regards, it's not at all different. But in other regards, it's a little bit different because as much as you, me, other wrestling fans might want, you know, prestigious news organizations <laughs> reporting on it, it's not. It's not nearly as mainstream as this. So that's the difference. There's guys with huge followings on huge platforms talking about how many quarterbacks are going to be taken in the first round? They're not talking about, you know, no, AEW or WWE at all. at all. They have partnerships. You know, we've talked to Tony Khan here on this network. Yeah. One of the reasons that conversation happened is because they have a partnership with DraftKings. You watch their pay-per-view on Sunday. There's a big DraftKings logo there. You can get mm -hmm. in the pool, right? And that's kind of a different, a different way to be involved. I think – one of the reasons is what Dave says. There's not enough demand. I think it's also the difference is one person basically controls all the results of the bet, right? Right. Where the Bears control the result of the first bet, and then the Commanders control the result of the second bet. So Correct. it's not so so solely dictated in that. But since we're talking about the differences, right, between betting out there and, and betting here, um, 
Vegas online, you know, sports betting here. I was telling you, Dave, that there is a big discrepancy between FanDuel and DraftKings, and this always interests me when this happens because these are the two market leaders. Mm-hmm. So their numbers are not always the same, but when you, you know you're not going to get a team laying six on one book and catching two on another, right? Obviously, you're never going to get anything like that. But sometimes you can get these series props for basketball. And this was true last year, and it's true this year. And it looks like one book is offering an odds boost. Nick Sixers series leader prices. Joel Embiid minus 240. Tyrese Maxey plus 330. Jalen Brunson plus 475. That's at one book. At another book, Embiid minus 175. It's a bit shorter. Tyrese Maxey plus 190. That's almost half. Jalen Brunson plus 850. Whoa, oh that's an odds boost. Or the other number's awful. But that's a huge discrepancy. I don't want to cut you short, Dave. So I want to get your take on, on that on the other side. Because I know sometimes for me as a better, I think, oh my gosh, what value I'm getting on Brunson. Right. Maybe the answer is, no, one Brunson number's good, and the other's the worst number you've ever seen. Correct. But we're going to try and talk through that a little bit and get you some updates on the live board. It's Kevin Walsh joined by Dave Showerpan, live on Sports Grid. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings. And ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a posturpedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Live and right here, it's Game Time Decisions. I'm Kevin Walsh, and we uh, are with Dave Sharapan, and I asked him the question about a disparity between the two top books in the same market. I think it's interesting. I think it's fascinating. And... I think for myself, something that I attempted to learn early on when I was betting is sometimes I would see a book gap, and I would think the better number was a gift. The shorter number was accurate, and the better number was a gift. I think I've learned a little bit more that the long number might be accurate, and the short number is just a bad number that you should ignore. So... Dave, I, I mentioned, and I think the reason I'm, I'm kind of hyper-focused on total points is we're not dealing with 
I'm not throwing Dave an obscure NFL draft prop. I'm throwing Dave an NBA playoff market that involves Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Jalen Brunson. Yes. The three superstars in this series, and one book has double the number on Brunson. And I'm just curious what you think when you see something like that. Well, my first thought was this. So I, and we got to see the number of options available. Both have four, but the fourth option isn't really an option. It's a token, you know, maybe somebody will bet this and we'll grab a, a couple bucks because Hart at 80 and uh, DiVincenzo at 100 are just to keep the market open with the fourth option. Now, the other three, one of those three is going to win. One of those three is going to, you know, have the most points in the series. What a series it's been, by the way. That's a whole other discussion. So the book that has the bigger favorite, they took a bet on that, and they need the bet on the other one. Now, that total points one, the price on Brunson is either, like you said before, really right or really wrong because it's that far yeah. off. Now, this is this is a great exercise in the way it used to be. When it was just Vegas, and you had books, say, down on Fremont Street, or you could hop from book to book to book in the stri- on the Strip, you had vastly different prices. The homogenization of the lines is not a good thing, in my opinion, because I would book everything without the screen, because that's the way I learned the business. I don't need the screen, and I don't need to see anybody else's prices. I'm booking my book, and I'm booking my prices. And if my price is way off, come and bet it with me or go bet it with them. That's what I would usually say to people. Now you're able to comparison shop. The Arbor guys open up. You know, all the math guys open up. Different opportunities. Leaves yourself options. You can put yourself in a position to earn a little or earn a lot, depending on the result. Um, you said it as well. These markets are hard to price. There's no there's no mm. master's level course you could go to. You can't go to Iona. You can't go to Penn State and learn how to do this. You kind of got to figure it out on the fly. So there's a lot of people doing it that are probably, I don't want to say vastly underqualified, but they're just making it up as they go. I say nobody knows Squadoosh all the time. I mean it in a lot of regards. There's a lot of prices that are off. Now, it may be off compared to the other joint, but it's perfect for ours. Who do you like in that, by the way? Does Brunson have a shot to win it? I mean, I'm getting interested in this plus 850. I've been waiting for the Brunson number. Now, So here's the funny thing. This is sometimes where books, I wanted the Brunson number before game two. They would have got me in at like two to one, right? And then I would be sitting on an awful number. They didn't post it. They waited for two games, and now they feel like everyone's going to play is the big thing, I think, for the book. So like, all right, Embiid's playing, okay? And I think that's where the confidence came to book the number. Let me give people the context in case they're they're. So we're two games in, right? And here, this is the other thing, and this is important. It's most points. If Embiid missed a game, he's basically done. Right. Because it's not points per game. Embiid is at 63. Brunson's at 46. Maxie's up top at 68 right now. So Brunson trails and beat the favorite by 17, and Maxie the second choice by 22. The problem now, in, in the price may have someone in the room, me and you talking this through, I'm just talking, why would the Brunson price be so much higher now than it was before? What if it's a short series? What if we're only going four or five games, right. which is now a possibility? If they split, we know we're going longer. So I don't think you see the price disparity. But, I mean, they got a 20-point lead, both of the Philly guys. So now you have to go get the money on Brunson. I kind of agree with that higher price. So, I mean, it looks like Embiid's going to play every game. Maxi should play every game. It's going to be tough for Brunson to catch him unless he puts up a 40-burger, right? Which I just looked is up is 7-1. to one. If He oh. puts up 40. Oh, boy. If he puts up 40, mm. I think the question – but here's the thing, right? 
So if he puts up 40, you'll say, ah, I could have just bet the 7-1 to one and be done with it. Okay, but if he puts up 38, how do you feel? Right? Right. Now the answer is what the other guys do. Brunson's been bad. The other two have been pretty good. All of averages would suggest he could beat out both of these guys by 10-plus next game. If he does, he'll have done good work with 850. I think the tempting thing with Brunson is you get Maxi out of here in game three. And then you play 850 off the Embiid number if you're willing to play like that, right? Now, I wouldn't do that now because the thing Maxi has going for him is 44 minutes a night. Right. I talked about that when I – I talked about I have a Maxi 6-1 to one to lead the series in assists which they would pay out if they paid it out after two games. We don't, we don't, we don't work that way. We still right. got a little, a little leg work here. Yeah. But Maxi all of a sudden is now playing an outrageous amount of minutes. Their season's on the line, and they're at home. Unless, I think to Dave's point, you know what, Dave? It's not just if it goes wrong. We get a blowout. Even if it there goes, you go. What if, what if Philly smokes them and you don't get enough minutes of work? It becomes very interesting. Now, the other day I said Dave was going to leave, and then Dave goes, no, no, I'm not leaving. i got to give him the baseball play. And he's got Rangers gear on. I didn't ask him a thing about hockey. So Dave goes nowhere. We will get the people in the mix with the NBA, the best bet as well. Game time decision is right back. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would say a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a possipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, those things. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Back right here on Sports Grid. Have we seen points yet? Uh, we have for Phoenix. It started out eight nothing, Minnesota. Uh, by the way, it's been a fun little start to that baseball board there, Judge. Uh, and Acuna Jr., two-plus bases each. There's a nice little early lead going on as well for Cincinnati. Uh, Dave, let me ask you, MLB, uh, do you have a play of the day? You mentioned, I think, yesterday, uh, Blue Jays, Royals, that under the wind, kind of forcing the number up a little bit. What would you look for today? Uh, the Cubs game, incredible line movement and stuff today with uh, the total. 
You know, it's apparently winds blowing out. The whole world knows the line steamed up almost. A, they moved the number rather than the juice. This morning it was 10 and 10 and a half. In-game numbers 11 and a half. Everybody relax on the wind. I think it stays under. I like Webb against the Mets tonight in baseball. I'm donning the Ranger stuff because I'm all caught up in this Ranger thing. Um, I think they win tonight. <laughs> they, I really am. I, listen, I got some got some self interest. You know what I'm saying in my pocket that would be hey would behoove things. Hey now, that the Rangers get to the Eastern Conference Finals and, and and really open up some possibilities of me coming there, picking you up, maybe Sam, maybe Jack, everybody going to the hockey game. On me, we'll have the money. Uh, It'll be fine. Yeah. So, I, uh, I yeah, Rangers tonight. Get it done. Okay. Uh, they're up early, two one. Panthers up one zero yes. on Tampa. Uh, as much as I got, I will get to the NBA in just a moment for people. But McDavid last night, I, I, I think McDavid could be on a mission going into the postseason. Oh. I was on his two plus points last night. He goes for five assists. Here's what happens. When someone does something like that, you go, see, I knew it. Oilers might not lose a game in the playoffs. What do you think of Edmonton right now? They win in five, max six. Okay. It's a bad matchup okay. for the Kings. They're not going to be able to okay. keep up. They may win one home game. Might be the gentleman's sweep. Enjoy the McDavid prop while it lasts his first round. Things are going to tighten up in the second round. Talk to you later. I'll Close it strong. This. Great stuff there from Consig. That number was minus 110 game one. Let's see what they do. Game number two. Uh, speaking of superstars and their props, Luca the Don is in action tonight, and we know points, rebounds, and assists for Luca always catches the attention. Uh, his numbers tonight: thirty-three and a half, nine and a half, nine and a half. You could get involved with the triple double if you would like. Here is what we've seen from Luca this season against the Clippers. Luca really made his hay against this Clippers team with the buckets, but I think the scoring from Luca comes in the fourth tonight. Doncic needs to bounce back specifically in the assist category. Only six in game number one, despite playing 40 minutes. 22 games with 40 or more minutes in the regular season. 19 of 22. He went over nine and a half assists, and we're catching it at a plus price. My favorite bet on that NBA board would be Luka Doncic over nine and a half assists. By the way, some big news for this game. Kawhi is expected to play. It's a surprise. Here's the thing, though. Play how many minutes? And truly, I would, and I haven't seen them yet, and if I make a play, you know I'll send it out to you at the Kevin Walsh. I would probably play Kawhi over. The Kawhi stuff is so crazy, you might think, oh, he's going to come back and play 20 minutes. If the books book it like that, the odds makers price Kawhi as 25 or less minutes, I'd probably shoot it over and take my chances. One of two things happen. Wildly efficient night, he goes full postseason minutes. That second one is liver than you would actually imagine. Kawhi coming back and playing 38 tonight would not shock me. Because if he's going to play, you would imagine he's there for the legitimate long haul. Keep tabs on that. The other NBA pick that has not started yet from me is a first quarter rebounds prop at plus 100 for Damian Lillard. Over. It might sound wonky. It's not. It's been consistent cash. Game one, he plays all 12 minutes, three boards. How about nine regular season games without Giannis? And seven of the nine, he went over this prop at a plus 100. I think we have a little hidden gem here on Damian Lillard with his first quarter rebounds. Baseball plays remaining. What do we have for the people? Gunnar Henderson over the one-and-a-half total bags. Uh, Pete Alonso under the one-and-a-half hit runs RBIs. And Rangers money line and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for a run scored. Not bad. Remembered it all. Not, not, not mad at that. Dinger Tuesday, by the way. Uh, Judge and Acuna is what we're waiting on. Two homers in that Yanks game, which is nice to see. Uh, Acuna Jr. and Judge were also two-plus bases props. They did pay the people. The next time I see you, it's going to be draft day. Johnny Manziel, see you then.
Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's when he swung it easy at three quarters.